Yes, EFD squad, what the football is occurring. I'll tell you what's occurring. It's the Euro Roundup with Pat and I, a very sinusy Patrick Van Straaten. I'm he's dying. got a cold, but he's battling on for you guys to bring you the highs and lows of European football. Where do we start, Van Van der Man? We start with Antoine Griezmann, who rescued a point for Atletico Madrid against Real Madrid this weekend. Now, they were down a goal for most of the game, thanks to Pepe. But in the mm. 85th minute, who pops up by the little Frenchman? They've now solidified that, uh, that third place on yeah. 62 points. They're a point above Jorge Sampaoli Sevilla, who, of course, have had an absolutely horrific month. And it's allowed Simeone's side to sneak in there. Now, Griezmann has some absolutely stupendous numbers when it comes to playing Real Madrid. No player has scored more goals against Real in La Liga since 2013 than the Frenchman. Oof. And we're sure that Zidane, who was celebrating his 50th game in charge of Los Blancos, will be absolutely delighted for his countryman. Did he headbutt he him after the game? I bet he thought about it. <laughs> I bet he did. But anyway, the little Frenchman, he does so much for that side. It's not just goals. He also completed three aerial duels, despite the fact he's not the tallest. Ooh. He made a tackle. He made two key passes, more than anybody else for Atleti. And, you know, when your side sees little of the ball, as Atleti tend to, you need people who are going to go that extra mile, who are going to track back and make the effort. They won 60% of their aerial duels. They completed 23 clearances and 20 blocks. And when you've got Griezmann Scrap. leading from the front, it's no surprise that they know they can knuckle yeah. down and get that result. Yeah, him and uh, Torres were really doing the hard yards, yeah. weren't they? And how's this for a little nugget of information? You talked about Zidane and his stewardship of Los Blancos. Atleti is still the only side who have kept a clean sheet away from home against Real Madrid in the Zidane era. Mm. Mind games, Pato. Is that what it is? Simeone. Mind games. Mind games. He's in his bold skull. Beaming and Kaylin Navas players. must be absolutely sick of the sight of the Rohi Blancos. Mm. That was the eighth goal he's conceded against them. And Real Madrid are now winless in their last four games against Atleti. That is their worst record since records began. So... That's, that's, that's how you do it. That's one. It was a. They've drawn one and lost three against them, yeah. But on a slightly more positive note, Real Madrid haven't lost a game against Atleti or Barcelona with Casemiro on the pitch. The absolute bulldog was fouling everyone left, right, and centre in that what first that? half. But yes, will Real Madrid do the double? Will Atleti finish above San Paolo Sevilla? Let us know in the comments below. Our first news of the weekend are into Milan. This comes courtesy of at India Laddie. Chris, why are they in? Well, Pata, it's because they lost their Crotone 2-1 on the day of my daughter's wedding. And it leaves them bit seventh French. in Serie A. A little bit. A little uh, bit. You know, we'll go with enjoyed it. it. It looks like Inter battered the Calibrian Minos as well with 73% possession and 17 shots. But Crotone <laughs> produced seven shots on target to Inter's measly four, so they were much more proficient up top. To put that into perspective, Pato, Inter conceded more shots on target in this game than any Premier League side has done all season. That includes Sunderland and Hull by virtue of being in the Premier League. But that is shocking. And given that Crotone only averaged three shots on target per game, this was an appalling showing from Inter, wasn't it, mate? Yeah, well, they were 2 0 down within 22 minutes. There was a brace from Diego Falcinelli. He's now got 11 goals and two Falcinelli. assists in the league this season. He's Crotone's top scorer, 25 year old forward. Quite an interesting little player. And though Inter pulled one back through right back D'Ambrosio in the second half, they simply couldn't recover a point. Now, the question here becomes how much have Inter genuinely improved? Last season, they took 1.76 points a game. This year, they're taking 1.77. These are virtually identical. Last season, they conceded one goal a game. This season, they're conceding 1.13 goals a game. So have they really improved? Mm. They're a little bit better on the front end, but the, but the defense is giving up more goals. I'm not sure that they're really on a trajectory towards the top of yeah. the league again. And given that Simeone's been linked with the job, Antonio Conte's been linked to the job, Pioli may feel under pressure, especially seeing as Inter's director, Piero Asilio, has said, I'm astounded by today, this is after the match. The quality of these players, I can't understand how they play like that. It's simply unacceptable. Oof. He called them arrogant as well. So worrying times for the Nerazzurri. As Chris says, they're down in seventh, but can they recover? We'll see over the remainder of this season. Staying in Milan for our next winners and things were coming up. Milhouse for Montea's men, weren't they, Pato, as they triumphed over Palermo for nothing. Yeah, they were at home and now they leapfrog into, into sixth. They're still two mm. points behind fifth place Atalanta. And this is the first time they've won a Serie A game by a four-goal margin since Oof. 2013. And they were 3-0 up 
at half time. Very impressive stuff. Now on the night, everything they hit seemed to land on target. They had 14 shots in this game with 10 of them on target. That's double their average shots on target per game this season. In comparison, Palermo had two shots on target from a total of eight shots altogether, which is very, very poor indeed. Now Suso was probably the man of the match on the night. Three dribbles, three opportunities, two key passes, scored and assisted. Very, very good. Mm. I, was, I, I, was, I was excited by the, by the possibilities of, the fin of uh, Vincenzo Montella's team. But another man who continues to make the difference on the other wing is Gerard Delefeu. It's almost as if he was a good player and should probably still be at Everton. It uh, almost is as yeah. if that was the player. Yeah, absolutely crazy, yeah. He looked very comfortable now in that 4-2-3-1. He wasn't on the board an awful lot. He only had 3.4% of his side's possession. But he was decisive when he was on it. He won the free kick for Suso's opener. There's a lovely little free kick in the near post. And he also uh, set up the Skiglio of Racy's fourth and completed three dribbles and one tackle on the night. Now, maybe we should limit our praise because this is a Palermo side that's got a minus 42 goal difference Ooh. in Ooh. Serie A. Oh my God. I was also impressed with 20-year-old right back Calabria, who had a day to remember as well, putting in five tackles. That's more than any of his teammates. And he sprang AC Milan's attacks down that right-hand side time and time again, where they had 38% of their play occurring. Next time, was 34 on the other wing. So yeah, a good day for him in the office, a good day for Montea's men. Will they secure Champions League football? Will one of the Milan sides actually take the initiative? Will they leap from Atalanta? Probably not. Let us know in the comments below. Our next losers are Olympic Lyonnais, who lost 4-1 at home to Lorient. Oh. Sete Afropa and with Bordeaux beating Mess 3-0, only five points separates the two sides for that final Europa League spot. Both of them need it. Lyon to retain those players like Fakir, like Lacazette. Bordeaux to become a viable club again. But to say this result was unexpected is an understatement. Lorient, a bloody third bottom Pato. Mm. They have the second worst goal difference in the league and it was only their ninth win of the season. And it's also the first time that Lyon has uh, conceded more than three goals, so four, you know, yeah, three sure. maths fans out there, at the Park OL in all competitions. So yeah, pretty, pretty poor state of affairs for them. The Lions even went 1-0 up Pato through Taliso with a well-placed goal, assisted by Memphis. That's his third in eight starts. But this was as good as it got for the home fans, wasn't it? Yeah, Juarez equalised before half-time mm. and immediately after half-time, Sylvain Marveau put them ahead. So Lorient then were able just to play on the counter. They got a third through uh, Mukonjo. He got his 11th and 12th of the season. The last one came from an absolutely appalling Anthony Lopez error. They were just not at the races in this game. And perhaps now Lyon are going to prioritise the Europa League, knowing that that could actually give them a shot at the Champions League and probably they're the second best team left in it after Man United, I'd say. They only had 30% mm. possession and two fewer shots on the home side, Lorient, in this game. Uh, but Bernard Cassoni's men were absolutely lethal on the counter. And now the Lions are going to have to lick their wounds. What a bad day for Olympic Lyonnais. Pun. We stay in League One for our next winner and it's Mario, Super Mario Balotelli, who's on a hot streak of form, isn't he, Pat? Well, he's either in our winners or in our losers today. It's good news. Mm. Nice beat Lille 2-1 away, a result which temporarily put them above PSG before they won at the weekend as well. Balotelli now has 13 goals and an assist in Ligue 1. That means he's responsible for 27% of the team's goals, had a direct hand in them. That's pretty impressive stuff. He had four shots in the first half, all of them on target. That's as many as Lille did as a team. Ooh, and though Nice went 1-0 down yeah. within, within quarter of an hour, they hit back within three minutes and they were ahead by half time. So, they responded to it and then they were able to shut the game down, I think. They did shut Lille out, not allowing Les Dogs a shot on target between the 27th and the 85th minute. This is a much tighter Nice than we've seen in recent weeks. The Northerners only had three shots on target the whole game, Pato. Nice now have 70 points. That's seven points more than they earned in the entirety of last season. Wow. So huge strides being made under Lucien Favre. They've also just lost two games. That's fewer than any other League One side. And that's the same as Bayern Munich and Real Madrid in their uh, respective domestic divisions. They have now the second best defensive record in the league as well, conceding just 26 in 32 games. Lucien Favre is working wonders, Pat. Will he, player, Cyprien and Balotelli be there next season? We don't know. Do you know? Do you know something we don't? Let us know in the comments below. 
Our final losers of the week are Hoffenheim. Chris, what happened to the Hoff? Well, they say don't hassle the Hoff, Pato. They did get hassled. But Hamburg hassled the shit out of them. Now, off the back of a famous victory over Bayern Munich last week, Hoffenheim lost 2-1 to relegation candidates Hamburg, as I just said. This was their 300th game in the Bundesliga as well, half and I. So Hamburg really ruined the occasion. Now they missed the chance to go four points clear of Dortmund. Tuckles Dortmund, who lost 4-1 away in Der Klassiker. You guys talked about that yeah, over on FD, didn't you? Go and listen to that garbage afterwards. Now, Aaron Hunt scored twice for Hamburg with Kramerich net netting a penalty for Nagelsmann's men in return. He's been on a hot streak recently. He scored eight goals, I think this side of 2017. Wow. So maybe Leicester shouldn't have let him go. Maybe we should have kept him. Probably. Maybe there was something in there, after all. Uh, bringing the Croatian, yeah, to eight goals in eight games. You've even put it on the script for me. I have, So but you just knew it. Teamwork, knowledge. knowledge. Knowledge is power, my friends. Nagelsmann named Hoffenheim's oldest starting line lineup in Bundesliga history as well at 26 years and 230 days. That's only three years and 31 days younger than the manager. That's more knowledge for you. Insight. Work that out myself with a calculator. Yeah, so yep. thank you. Had to read that there because a last minute edition by Patrick O'Strahan. Now in this game though, Hoffenheim really couldn't quite make the breakthrough. Like you look at the stats and it's kind of hard to figure out until you look at slightly more advanced stats. So on shots, 12 apiece, looks pretty even. Hoffenheim is 60% of possession. So you start to wonder what's gone wrong. But then you see that of the 180 passes Hamburg completed, more than half were in the attacking third. More than half wow. of them. By comparison, around a quarter of Hoffenheim's 315 successful passes were in that zone of the pitch. So they actually, despite having more passes overall, completed fewer overall in the final third. And that really shows you they no couldn't get into the area. Pat. Yeah, they couldn't get into the zone where you actually cause problems. Now, this is pretty impressive because actually Hoffenheim have the second best defensive record in the league mm. this season. They went into this game having conceded 26 goals in 27 games. So for Hamburg to do this to them is quite a tall order. And of course that tremendous record has seen Julian Nagelsmann linked with Dortmund, with Bayern, and of course with Arsenal as well. So he's a hot property at the moment, but it was a bad day for Hoffenheim. If they'd won, they'd have been four points clear of Dortmund and probably would have had their one hand on that final Champions League spot in the Bundesliga. If he secures in Champions League football, is he manager of the season? Yes. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below. Just the one shout out this week as I was watching the Masters until one o'clock in the morning and it comes from Le Dude, who thinks Freiburg should have been in our winners. They're now sixth Pato in the Bundesliga with a goal difference of minus 11. It's pretty damn good. German football after they beat Mainz 1-0. Yeah, what should, they do? what should the five people do next? Yeah, I was going to say, I don't have any shout outs, mate. But what you should do is check out last week's Stat Wars, where Chris and I take each other on. I'll give you a little spoiler now. Chris Hamill was on fire. And of course, head over to Fuck Football yeah. Daily and check out this week's winners and losers if you like that sort of thing. But you shouldn't. It's rubbish. Bye.